Hello everybody, Jet here, and uh, welcome to my Let's Talk about, uh, well, Total War Free Kingdoms Warlord Legends, Leo Biao, Leo Biao, I, I'm terrible at pronouncing these names, I do apologise, I've, I've had lots of comments on my Tao Tao pr pronunciation, apparently it's not Cow Cow. Anyway, let's jump straight into this, I do apologise for my bad pronunciations. As always guys, big, 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 big disclaimer. I am not Total War staff or Creative Assembly staff, so everything I say could be very wrong. Also, this is all subject to change, as is in this disclaimer, and this is just one of the Warlord leg Legends who you will be able to play at the start of the campaign. Sorry, looking sideways there, just checking I'm actually recording. So as I mentioned, today we're going to be talking about Liu Biao, the aristocrat. Um, that's his play style. So uh, he is a smart and charismatic man, Liu Biao is known for his love of academia and sophistication. His faction has unique scholarly court positions and a building chain that increases the character experience game. While the faction leader, he grants a public order bonus to owned lands and a satisfaction boost to all the characters. That, that sounds quite good, actually. Sorry, it's still a little coffee, so I muted myself there. So his hero class is a commander, so he's not, not a... He's uh, somebody who sits back and commands, and his nickname is the Gentleman of Han. So who is he? Esteemed academic Liao Biao is known as one of the eight geniuses of Jiangzi. I'm not even going to pretend I pronounced that right. A group of scholars, uh, scholars during the later Han era. Governor of Jing province, he is a smart and charismatic man with an Appreciation for etiquette, nobility, and the finer things in life. A man seldom ruffled, Liao Biao, de Liao Biao demonstrates his ar ar aristocratic pedigree through, sta through stable official officiality. God, I'm getting paranoid about his name now. Through, uh, through the Han... Yeah, through the Han crumbles, its splits and legacies endure. Although the hand crumbles, its legacy, its spirit and legacy endure through the many branches of and branches and descendants. Liao Biao holds his lineage closely, serving with unwavering sense of duty and prosperity, greatly during during Yeah during time of peace, an accomplished administrator and ever the traditionalist. Liao Biao wishes to preserve the status quo earnestly hoping that the chaos will abate and reason will prevail. But times are changing, and the Biao must find his place in the new land, or fade forever into the mists of the forgotten. Yet, with change comes opportunity. The Biao is an exceptional governor and has the potential to be much more, provided he can adapt to this era of conflict. If he succeeds in exercising his authority on Xiang. Xiang Yang commandery, he can lead his commandery to time to a time of stability in the ca this chaos, using it that as his foundation, and it may only be a matter of time until he can restore peace to all of China. So um, makes me sound. We'll find out more in playstyle. Obviously, but it makes it sound like he's obviously he's not the general on the ground. Though I suspect as he's a commander type, he will provide a few bonuses to the people on the ground. It sounds like he's going to be more providing bonuses to the provinces, so to your stability, to your, to the good governance of your province, which will probably mean more supplies, more food. We'll have a look at playstyle now anyway. Liao Biao's focus on academia and intelligence defines his playstyle. He offers a safe haven to nobles and gentry, and as such he values sophistication, knowledge and harmony. This grants him unique scholarly court positions, student, tutor and scholar but increase experience game of these and all characters in his faction and his unique building chain l lodging and tea garden gardens can further increase experience gain so he's giving extra experience to all the generals who operate under him and so every and I don't know if that's just generals or units so everybody's going to be that much better than the opponent so while he himself might not be your best general he'll be providing you with lots of good generals when used well, the Albao's bonuses to character growth can offer you a path to employing high-ranking generals earlier in the game than other warlords, so what we just discussed. Meaning, although 
not a significant military force at the outset, Liao Bao can use his use his strategy to compete with the more military-minded warlords on the map. Liao Bao also starts starts in a relatively secure diplomatic situation, being the master of two val, val, vassals, Kai Mao and Hung, Hur, Hurang Zhu. These vassals occupy land to the south of him and offer valuable support in shoring up his southern borders. So it sounds like he starts in a good position as well. A calm and steady hand at the, at the wheel. The Yao Biao offers a public, a public order bonuses to his land while faction leader and satisfaction boost all characters under his control. However, he's, not, he's no spring chicken at the start of the game. So when playing as him, you'll need to be careful who you select as your heir. Your sons, sons, through your flesh and blood, sadly, though your flesh and blood, sadly, don't show the same level of promise that their father did at their age. You may need to look outside your current family to secure your legacy. So it sounds like he's going to have a very interesting, you know, he's going to be good to give people experience early and mid game until he dies of old age from the sounds of it. At which point it could be a bit of a different thing. But while he's there at the start, you're going to have a nice early position, certainly. It sounds like you've got a strong starting position as well. So you're in a good position to build. And I would suspect that's how he's meant to be played. He's going to be a very defensive play style early. Where you're just going to build your faction up and get all the experience for your people. Uh, to your people and uh, attempt to find an heir who's not one of your sons from the sound of it. Guanzi. Guanzi. I'm going to read this from down here because it's exactly the same. Liao Bao starts the game with support of his close friend, Huang Zong, a brave and wise elderly general. Despite his age, Huang Zong is still more ca a more capable warrior, um, a more than capable warrior, and one of the greatest archers around, something he is keen to prove whenever the opportunity presents itself. Liao Bao also has the support of his son, Liu Kui and Liu, Liu, Liu Kui and Liu Kong, as time goes by, they should be given greater responsibilities to carry on the Yang Yang administration. However, it is known that Liu Bei puts more trust in Hang Zong than either of them. While Hang Zong's age makes him unsuitable for an heir, some say that Liu Bei is already looking for others to pick up the mantle. So again, it's mentioning that. However, we have also mentioned um, satisfaction, and something I've seen sorry earlier on. We've mentioned satisfaction of generals and people under me. So um does make me wonder if people can potentially peel off your faction taking armies and get giving you rebellions anyway starting position um the game begins with uh, with Liao Bao in Xingyang commandery in Jing province so that's going to be part of this this area um as the governor of this province an office given to Liao Bao by the great Han empire however rebels are rising around his territory Liao Bao Liao needs to bring them down, protect his people, and restore his commentary before going further. Only then can Liao Bao expand, moving closer to the territory of other warlords, among them Yun Shu and Sun Jian. Maybe the first he has to deal with. Because I was thinking they do start around here, so we're well we've got some secure secure regions, we, we do have some things. The initial dilemma Liao Bao's initial dilemma starts when Yuan Shao secretly sends him a message asking him to take the Imperial Seal back from Sun Jian. You will have to make a choice. Accept Yuan Shao's request and attack Sun Jian, which will trigger a war against Sun Jian and Yun, Yuan Shu, his ally. Or ignore Yuan Shao's request and anger the powerful warlord in the north. So it sounds like an... A war on my doorstep to start with, or a potential war later on with somebody more powerful. So both could prove tricky. Um, could be an interesting one. Early in the campaign, each player will walk. So this is what we're going doing. So and we've discovered a lot of this. Um, so let's go down. All this is saying what we've already done. Done. Um, ignoring Yuan Shao will mean the situation is calmer. But your potential enemies will have the ability to grow much stronger as well. Attacking Sun Jian, on the other hand, will mean a difficult start, but great opportunities. 
So it's it's a choice of a rockier start, but dealing with things early or waiting, biding our time, and potentially dealing with much stronger enemies. As the ruler of Zhang Yang Commandery, the player needs to unite the commandery by conquering re regions that were lost to rebels. Afterwards, Liao Biao will have difficulties expanding, and he needs to pick his enemies in a smart way. If he does not go to war with Sun Jian and Yuan Shu, he might have to think about cutting himself loose from the Han Empire, or potentially focus up on, on building up Jiang Yang before making further steps to expand his realm. So basically, you're in a yeah, it sounds like an interesting position. So I, I thought you were safer earlier from the description. It sounds like you've got good allies near you, but you've also got potential enemies. So if you don't go to war with um with Sun Jian early, you know you've got to go to war with the Han Empire, which could be good, could be bad. Um, what kind of player is he for? Louis Liu Biao is the choice of player for those who seek wisdom, knowledge, and clarity, um, or fought to take the right decisions and bring peace back to a chaotic land. The lands are, are beset by conflict, and you must restore order. Liu Biao is a man who views wisdom and experience as the sword and shield to protect the realm. And of course, we've got some further reading here, guys. So. He sounds like he's he's more of a thoughtful character. He's going to be one who you uh, take a bit more time when you're playing. You're not going to necessarily be jumping straight into every conflict as it does. Um, again, he sounds like another polar opposite to Sun Jian, um, similar to you know like Cao Cao, but he's not quite as manipulative as Cao Cao. He's more sit back, take the time to think about what he's doing, build up his forces, build up his generals, and take a more not necessarily defensive, but a more. Um, What's the word I'm after? A more procedural, a more, a more thought-out approach to his campaign. So he'll uh, think through a campaign before you do it. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, please feel free to pop any comments down in the comments section, unsurprisingly, or jump over to my Discord and say hi. There is a link to my Discord in the comments and the description, as well as links to my Twitter and my Patreon, as well as to my affiliation, such as Fanatical, where you can pick up Free Kingdoms and to overclockers. Please uh, feel free to give them a check out and thank you very much for your time.